Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to be installing Ubiquiti's new-ish long-range Wi-Fi 6 access point. This is the U6LR, so it is named. And we're going to be installing this in a centralized location within my house. So we should have really good coverage across the entire house. And my house is only 2,100 square feet, by the way. So this should be more than enough for the entire house. And we'll actually be taking down the Ubiquiti AC Pro that I currently have installed because I'll really no longer need it once I get this up. And so without any further waiting, let's go ahead and jump right on in. So I'm not gonna do a full review of this. If you guys want to see a review of this actual device, I'd recommend checking out Mac Telecom Networks. I'll leave a link in the description so you can watch that YouTube video where Cody does a review of this actual unit. And he goes into pretty good detail, pretty much explaining everything you guys are gonna wanna know about this thing. Uh, but I will cover some of the basics, uh, the things that are important to me and the reason why we are moving to this. Uh, so there's not too much in the box. It's got a plastic covering. It does not look like this. It scared me when I first saw it. And here it is. This is a, a fairly hefty unit. So the only things we're gonna need out of here are of course the access point itself. Uh, we have a nice stencil, which we probably don't need, but we'll end up using. We have the wall plate. So this is wall or ceiling plate. So this is what we're gonna actually use to mount on the ceiling. And um, this is the bracket that goes on the back of the unit so we can mount it to the plate. Or at least I think it is. Okay, on second thought, I actually don't know what this is for, but we'll read the instructions and actually find out because I'm gonna have to do that this time. Um, and let's see what else is in here. There is... I think if this is anything like Ubiquiti switches they offer, this will be where all of the screws and other like hardware, yep, that's exactly what it is. Uh, wow, okay, pretty cool. So it looks like we've got everything we need to actually mount this thing uh, to the ceiling, which is perfect. I hate when manufacturers don't include like a bare minimum set of things. And the last thing in here is the instructions, which uh, apparently is a UI code I'm sorry, UR code that we're gonna have to scan in order to actually pull up. So I guess we won't be reading instructions after all. All right, well that pretty much covers that. And in case you're wondering how to power this thing for any reason, if you don't wanna go watch the review, we're gonna be using one ethernet cable that is power over ethernet from the switch uh, to the device. So our switch is gonna be powering this unit and we should be good to go from there. And uh, all right, I guess it's time to install. Let's get to it. All right, so it's cold outside, got my hoodie on. I'm ready to go in the attic where it will also be cold. And we're gonna do something, uh, basically we're just gonna survey where we want this access point to go. So I know where it's gonna go on the ceiling above myself, but the problem is, is I don't know if there's gonna be studs in the way, which I could use a stud finder for, but I just wanna survey it first before I start puncturing uh, holes in the drywall. So that way I kind of get a good sense of where everything is. So, Let's go ahead and go up inside the attic and see what we're working with. We're here in the attic and I know that that is where the front door is and we want to mount the access point somewhere over here and we are looking for a light that should be somewhere around this area and all we have to do is really find one of these uh, white electric cables that would go to that lamp which I think conveniently happens to be right there and this might be where the wall is that separates the foyer or front entrance way with the living room which should be all this back area over here so I, I think that's our candidate right there uh, so now we need to find the light um, for that and uh, it should be pretty easy to identify where we're going to mount this thing from there so let's get to it Okay, so we have a bit of a problem. I actually can't find where the light is, or the light socket, whatever that thing is called, is. I can't find it. I have a feeling it's underneath some wood, which is kind of dangerous because it's a big block of wood, big, long, flat one. I don't know what else to call it. It's not a two by four. It's a lot bigger than that. And that means that if I try to poke a hole um, up from the bottom, or like from underneath the ceiling or whatever, from the ground level up, uh, I might hit some wood, which I don't want to do because then I won't know where to run my ethernet cable. So I think I'm gonna try and look a little bit more and, and get oriented and see where I am uh, because I am a little lost. 
And if I can't figure it out, then we're just gonna have to find a new place for the access point, which I didn't really account for doing. So I'm gonna get back to digging around in here and see if I can find it. Okay, so I did have to end up putting a mask on to prevent free me from breathing in all the micro dust or particles from the insulation. But I did actually find the light socket that I was looking for. So there it is down there. Uh, it took me, I actually dug all around this area to try and find it. And I thought it might be, might be covered by wood, but it's not. Uh, so I think I'll be safe to basically poke a hole somewhere right in there because I think that's where the wall that separates the foyer right back there and the entryway into the living room. So to me, it looks like it's gonna be safe to poke a hole straight up uh, from below. So now we just need to go downstairs and do that. That was uh, a lot more work than I thought it would be. <laughs> so uh, I guess I need to work on my orientation skills because man, that was a lot of trouble. All right, let's get downstairs. So I think somewhere around here is gonna be centered, I hope. <laughs> um, I think we're just gonna go for gold here and hope that it is. And to make matters worse, we're gonna use a permanent marker instead of something smart like a pencil. So I'm just gonna mark four little holes where we're gonna screw. All right, and in case you're wondering uh, which screw holes I'm using, I'm using A. Uh, so this is marked with a bunch of letters that say what they are, and I'm using A. In case you're wondering, and that looks crooked. All right, let's go get a drill and uh, get it screwed in. Okay, so the manual calls for using a one fourth inch drill bit for drilling holes into the uh, drywall, so that's what I've got. And I'm just gonna double check to make sure that everything is as aligned or as straight as possible before I drill. All right, point of no return. All right, that's perfect. Um, now we need a 1 16th for our ethernet cable, which I need to mark down too. Okay, so earlier I think I lied and I said 1 16th, I actually meant to say 11 16th for the ethernet cable. So that's what I'm gonna drill right now is 11 16th, not 1 16th. So we, now we need to run ethernet cable from the network closet to here and then also get the thing mounted and we're pretty much done. All right, so now we're gonna run our mono price cat six cable up from the server closet and into the attic and then down to the access point. I've covered this a few times in the past where I've run uh, ethernet cable down into the network closet, which is right below here. So if you guys wanna check out that video, uh, be sure to check the link for that. And this is the fish tape I'm using. This is Klein Tools uh, extracting and retracting tape. Uh, this has worked really well for me in the past and that's what we're gonna use to fish down uh, into the network closet and pull up our ethernet cable. So I'm just gonna run this down and collect it from downstairs when we get there. All right, I think that is about long enough and as far as it's gonna go. So let's get in the network closet and see if we can fish it out from behind the wall. Just to give you guys an idea of what I was talking about earlier, here's a light that is just outside of the foyer and sort of part of the living room. And over here is where we made all the holes for our access point to mount it into the ceiling. Back downstairs from the attic, and here is the fish tape that we just ran down the wall into the network closet. As you can see, uh, it was pretty simple to do. Now I just need to take the ethernet cable and use some black electrical tape to tape it around the fish tape. And then we're gonna pull that back up into the attic uh, through this hole here in the panel, which will be really easy to do. Nobody tells you how many times you gotta walk up and down or climb up and down the ladder. But for me, this is like my sixth or seventh time. Uh, I, I kind of lost count. Also, I wasn't really counting, but it's been more times than I like to admit, for sure. Let's get this done. All right, see where that light is? That is where the network closet light is. 
and we're just gonna pull that network cable up and we should be good to go. All right, here we go. See, that was easy. Now we're just gonna go from here to basically just under where that light is. Now it's kind of hard to see from here, but we're just need to get back over there. And that's probably about six, seven feet. It's not too far. All right, there we go. So cable is through the drywall and I just ran it all along there back to the server closet. So I think I'm pretty much done. I just need to clean up now and uh, make the cable. And so we barely have enough cable. <laughs> that was barely enough. Man, that was too close for comfort. Here's a tool I always use for stripping and crimping my ethernet cables from client tools. It's pretty awesome and I love it. Uh, we're also gonna be following the T568 Bravo wiring instructions you see here on both ends of the cable, cause that matters. And then we'll be using the client tools RJ45 ethernet jack uh, as well. And uh, yeah, we're just gonna get up there and finish the job. By the way, uh, links in the video description below for both. We got our ethernet cable run and installed here in the patch panel. So we're just gonna use the signature blue cable to identify that this is power over ethernet. And we're gonna just plug it in here. And once we get the access point installed, that should light up. So time to do the access point stuff. All right, so if we did this all correctly, it should light up almost immediately and also have data, but that's not something we're gonna know until after we get hooked up and it lit up. So that's one good sign. Let's get this thing mounted and uh, configured. And that looks pretty lined up to me. It's definitely a little wider, but yeah, it's gonna look good up there. Unfortunately, we're gonna skip the adoption and configuration of the new access point. If you guys wanna see that, I would highly recommend checking out another YouTuber's channel that will totally walk you through that process in a much better way than I probably ever will. But nonetheless, we are gonna look at speed tests. Now the AC Pro is much further away. It is in the living room behind a TV and it has a lot of walls that needs to penetrate in order to provide Wi-Fi access to this room. And we'll be using the Mac Mini to do these speed tests. Now the AC Pro still manages to pull off a pretty respectable download speed of 200 megabits per second and delivers a whopping 220 megabits per second during upload transfers, which is actually really good. Now, obviously the long range access points can do much better because it's much closer, but it does manage to give us a very nice download speed of 360 megabits per second and a very nice upload speed of 350 megabits per second. So this is a pretty welcome upgrade, I would say. The Wi-Fi access is so far been superb, and as we are around the outer perimeter of the house, the Wi-Fi signal has been perfectly fine, and it's a welcome break from the AC Pro, which isn't really mounted in the optimal position uh, in its defense, but it's just starting to show its age. So this is a, definitely a nice upgrade and I'm glad to see it. And it also is more centrally located, so there's still a lot of like unfair things going on here, but that's that's point. So I guess we're gonna get rid of the AC Pro and this will be our sole access point for the entire house. And I don't really know what else there is to tell you guys about this uh, in general. Just go check out some other YouTube channels out there. I'm sure they'll have tons of information for you. And if you're at all curious about all the tools I use, of course there will be links in the video description below and I would also recommend checking out some of my previous videos where we mess around and run cables throughout the house and basically just make an entire mess of everything. Uh, so with that, I wanna thank you all for watching and I will see you next time.